150 years ago, the business corporation was a relatively insignificant institution. Today, it is all pervasive, like the church, the monarchy, and the Communist Party in other times and places. The corporation is today's dominant institution. This documentary examines the nature, evolution, impacts, and possible futures of the modern business corporation. Initially given a narrow legal mandate, what has allowed today's corporation to achieve such extraordinary power and influence over our lives? We begin our inquiry as scandals threaten to trigger a wide debate about the lack of public control over big corporations. I don't think there is um, an overhang uh, over the market of distrust. Listen, 95% or some percent, huge percentage of the business community are honest and uh, reveal all their assets. And got compensation programs that are balanced, and, uh, but there are some bad acts. The media debate about the basic operating principles of the corporate world was quickly reduced to a game of follow the leader. I still happen to think the United States is the greatest place in the world to invest. We have some shakeups that are going on because of a few bad apples. Some people call me a bad apple. Well, I may be bruised, but I still taste sweet. the sweetest apple on the tree. These are not just a bunch of bad apples. This is just a few bad apples. It's not just a few bad apples. We've got to get rid of the bad apples. You can start with Tyco. Bad apples. We know all about WorldCom. Bad apples. Xerox Corporation. Bad apples. Arthur Anderson. Bad apples. Enron, obviously. Bad apples. Kmart Corporation. The fruit cart is getting uh, a little more full. I don't think it's just a few apples, unfortunately. I think this is the worst crisis of confidence in uh, business. What's wrong with this picture? Can't we pick a better metaphor to describe the dominant institution of our time? Through the voices of CEOs, whistleblowers, brokers, gurus and spies, insiders and outsiders, we present the corporation as a paradox, an institution that creates great wealth but causes enormous and often hidden harms. I see that the corporation as part of a jigsaw in society as a whole, which if you remove it, the picture's incomplete. But equally, if it's the only part, it's not going to work. A sports team. Some of us are blocking and tackling, some of us are running the ball, some of us are throwing the ball, but we all have a common purpose, which is to succeed as an organization. A corporation is like a family unit. People in a corporation work together for a common end. Like the telephone system, it reaches almost everywhere. It's extraordinarily powerful. It's pretty hard to avoid. And it transforms the lives of people, I think, on balance for the better. The eagle, soaring, clear-eyed, competitive, prepared to strike, but not a vulture. Noble, uh, visionary, majestic, that people can believe in and be inspired by, that creates such a lift that it soars. I could see that being a good logo for the principled company. <laughs> OK, guys, enough bullshit. Corporations are artificial creations. You might say they're monsters trying to devour as much profit as possible uh, at anyone's expense. I think of a whale, gentle, big fish, which could swallow you in an instant. Dr. Frankenstein's creation has overwhelmed and overpowered him as the corporate form has done with us.
the word corporate gets attached in, in almost, you know, in a pejorative sense to, and it gets married with the word agenda. And one hears a lot about the corporate agenda as though it is evil, as though it is an agenda which is trying to take over the world. Personally, I don't use the word corporation. I use the word business. I will use the word, use the word uh, uh, company. I'll use the words business community. Because I think that is a much fairer representation than zeroing in on just this word corporation. What is a corporation? It's funny that I've taught in a business school for as long as I have without ever having been asked uh, so, so pointedly to say what I think a corporation is. It is one form of business ownership. It's a group of individuals working together to serve a variety of objectives, the principal one of which is earning large, growing, sustained, legal returns for the people who own the business. The modern corporation has grown out of the industrial age. The industrial age began in 1712 when an Englishman named Thomas Newcomen invented a steam-driven pump to pump water out of the English coal mine so the English coal miners could get it more coal to mine rather than hauling buckets of water out of the mine. It was all about productivity, more coal per man hour. That was the dawn of the industrial age. And then it became more steel per man hour, more textiles per man hour, more automobiles per man hour. And today, it's more chips per man hour, more gizmos per man hour. The system is basically the same, producing more sophisticated products today. The dominant role of corporations in uh, our lives is essentially a product of the roughly the past century. Corporations were originally associations of people who were chartered by a state to perform some particular function, like a group of people want to build a bridge over the Charles River or something like that. There were very few chartered corporations in early United States history. And the ones that existed had clear stipulations in their state-issued charters how long they could operate, the amount of capitalization, uh, what they made or did or maintained a turnpike, whatever, was in their charter, and they didn't do anything else. They didn't own or couldn't own another corporation. Uh, their shareholders were liable, and so on. In both law and the culture, the corporation was considered a subordinate entity that was a gift from the people in order to serve the public good. So you have that history, and we shouldn't be misled by it. It's not as if those were the halcyon days when all corporations served the public trust. But there's a lot to learn from that. The Civil War and the Industrial Revolution created enormous growth in corporations. And so there was an explosion of railroads who got large federal subsidies of land, banking, heavy manufacturing, and corporate lawyers a century and a half ago realized they needed more power to operate and wanted to remove some of the constraints that had historically been placed on the corporate form. The 14th Amendment was passed at the end of the Civil War to give equal rights to black people. And therefore, it, it said no state can deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And that was intended to prevent the states from taking away life, liberty, or property from black people, as they had done uh, for so much of our history. And what happens is the corporations come into court, and corporation lawyers are very clever, and they say, oh, you can't deprive a person of life, liberty, or property. We are a person. A corporation is a person. And the Supreme Court goes along with that. And what was...